Question 2 from the 2023 Higher Physical Examination Paper 1 from the SQA. A hot air balloon is moving vertically and at a height of 50 metres, a sandbag is released. The sandbag takes three seconds to reach the ground and the effects of air resistance can be ignored. The initial velocity of the sandbag on release is given and you've got five responses there. OK, let's start off by looking at a picture of what's happening, a quick sketch. You can see the sandbag is released from the balloon here and it falls a height of 50 metres in 33 seconds. Now, what we'll have to do here is put down our U, V, A, S and T and stick to the convention that everything is up the way is positive and everything is down the way is negative. Now, we do that, we end up with the following pieces of data. The initial velocity is what we're after, so we put a question mark there. V is unknown, so we can ignore that. The acceleration is one of the given ones, it's minus 9.8 metres per second every second, which means the acceleration due to gravity is downwards. The displacement is minus 50 metres because the displacement from the starting point is downwards. We take that displacement to be zero there at that point and anything down the way from there, we call that negative. That's a very important thing. So the displacement we have to put down is minus 50 metres. And that gives us the time t equal to 3 seconds. So we have got u, we have got a, we've got s and we've got t. And we have to solve that for u. Well, here we go. That's the equation there then. It's S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Now, just be very careful. Put in the numbers and trust the maths. Be careful with arithmetic. And we should end up with values which we can solve. Now, when we put in the actual numbers, we get the following. We get, in this line here, minus 50, the displacement, is U times 3, because T is 3 seconds. So we get U times 3 plus the bracket of a half times the acceleration, remember the minus sign, times the time squared, 3 squared. So we multiply those brackets out, we end up with the following, and just swapping around a 3 and a U to make it more algebraic. We get minus 50 is equal to 3U minus 44.1. Now we're in a position to solve that equation because it should be quite easy to solve. So we bring this down a bit, we bring over the next part, and we can solve it. We can say that minus 3U, taking the 3U over to the left-hand side, becomes minus 3U. And that's going to equal to minus 44.1 plus the 50. When we take the 50, the minus 50 over the other side. And we end up with a simple B equation then. Minus 3u equals minus 44.1 plus 50. And finally, minus 3u equals 5.9. So we can now just simply divide by minus 3 to get our speed, our initial speed, our initial velocity. And that's what we get then. We get u equals 5.9 divided by minus 3, and that's going to give us minus 1.96 metres per second. To just one second we can figure, we can call that minus 2 metres per second. So the initial velocity then is going to be 2 metres per second, but it's going to be going down the way. So the balloon was actually going down the way with a velocity of 2 metres per second at that particular point. So we go back up to our responses. We're looking for 2 metres per second down the way. And there's our response there. 2 metres per second upwards. No, 2 metres per second downwards. It's got to be that one there, B. So the answer for question 2 is 2B. Two question 3 from the 2023 Higher Physics Examination Paper 1 from the SQA. The momentum of an object of mass 4 kilograms is 20 kilogram metres per second. And the kinetic energy of the object is, and we're given our five usual responses. Now, what we have to do here is realise that momentum P, I'll write this down, momentum P is going to equal to mass times the velocity. Now, from that, we can find out what the velocity of the object is. So, therefore, the velocity is going to equal the momentum P divided by the mass. So, that's going to give you 20 kilogram meter per second. And we're dividing that by a mass of 4 kilograms. The kilograms cancel out, and we have V is going to go to 5 metres per second every second. So we've now got the velocity of the actual object. All we have to do is put in the kinetic energy formula, EK. And that's going to go to 1 half times the mass times the speed squared. We've now just worked out the speed, and we've also got the mass. So we plug things in, we get 1 half times the mass, and the mass is 4 times the speed squared, which is 5, 5, 25. And we get 1 half times 4 times 25, and that comes out to become 50 units of kinetic energy, 50 joules. So the answer to that question is going to be B. 
Question 4 from Paper 1 of the 2023 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A pendulum bob of mass M is released from rest at height H. The bob reaches a speed V at the lowest point of its swing. Now, neglecting air resistance, the speed of the bob at its lowest point is doubled by and we've got five choices here what to do. First thing we do, we realise that the bob at height H is going to have a potential energy EP and that's got to equal to M G H. When it reaches its lowest point, that potential energy will be changed completely into kinetic energy because there is no air resistance to sap any of the energy away. So we're going to have kinetic energy at that position EK and that's going to be equal to one half M V squared. And the two energies will be the same. So if we're going to have a half mv squared, the kinetic energy, one half mv squared is going to equal to mgh. That's the value of it all. Now we can see we've got m on both sides, so we can scrap m from each side, and we're left with just a half v squared. And that's got to be equal to, in this case, gh. We simply multiply through by 2, and we get v squared equals 2g times h. Now the 2g here, I'll put that in brackets for you because that's going to be a constant because g is not going to change. So we can write this as v squared equals a constant times the height h. Now here comes the really good bit and if you really understand your maths you can write this part down. We can just say that v squared divided by the height h, any height h, is going to equal to a constant k. And because of that relationship then we can say the following. We can say the v1 squared divided by the first height is going to equal to v2 squared times the second divided by the second height h2. Now what's our condition then is that v2 is going to equal to double v1. So we can put down v2 equal to 2v1. So we'll get v1 squared divided by h1. And that's going to equal to bracket 2 v1 all squared because V2 is 2V1, divided by H2. And if we rearrange to find this new height H2, we end up with H2 times V1 squared, and that's going to go to, if we cross multiply, H1 times 2V1 squared. That's going to give you 4V1 squared. And you can see, once again, V1 squared is going to cancel from each side. So we can cancel out the V1 squares. And we're left with the second height, H2, must be H1 times 4, or written this way, 4H1. So for to double the speed at the bottom of this pendulum, we must make sure we go to 4 times the original height. And we've done that just by knowing a simple relationship with v squared equals a constant times h. So h2, the new height, must be four times the original height h1. So therefore, what we're looking for is change the height to 4h. And the answer is going to be a. Question five from the 2023 Higher Physics Examination paper. We have a golfer teeing off and the golf ball leaves the club with an initial velocity of 74 metres per second at an angle of 31 degrees to the horizontal. And what we have to do is resolve the components of that velocity vector into the horizontal and vertical components and match them up in the table. A quick sketch of what's happening, we can see here, we've got the 74 metres per second vector at 31 degrees to the horizontal. We can break that into the two components, the horizontal components, and the vertical component represented by blue here. And we can do our trig on that. We know that the vertical component is going to be 74 times sine of 31. And that's going to give us 38 meters per second to two significant figures. And likewise with the horizontal component of the velocity, it's going to be 74 cos 31, which is going to give us 63 meters per second to two significant figures. I tend to remember uh, the vertical component with sine because it's in the air and the horizontal one as cos o, o on the ground. No matter how you remember it, it's a straightforward question and if you look at your table you should match up the correct answers. The horizontal velocity is going to be 63, so it's going to be this one and that one, but the vertical velocity is going to be 38, so it looks like the answer is going to be letter D.